be the glory. Amen. We Amen. honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. To the deacons, the trustees, the officers here at Cedar Grove. Amen. To our musicians, to our audio video team. Amen. To my wife and to each one of you, my father's children. Amen. It's good to be in the house one more time. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, please be reminded of your obligation to give your tithes and your offerings. Amen. You can leave them if you're here. Amen. At, at the uh, audio video podium. Also, you have ways to give online. Amen. Cedar Grove, St. Paul's.org. You can go to the links of PayPal, Giveify, and Cash App. And you may give that way. Amen. Amen. For the Lord loves what? She forgiver. Amen. Also, before we get started, um, a few other announcements. Want to uh, let you know that um, we do have some hot dogs and hamburgers left over yesterday from the AV um, celebration. So if you desire after the service to get a hamburger hot dog, uh, they're in the fellowship hall. Amen. See someone of the AV Day committee and they'll be glad to assist you and get some, you know, a few of those hamburgers and hot dogs. Amen. Also want to thank those, uh, the bikers and uh, the car riders and all who supported and contributed to uh, AV Day event and celebration to make it a success. Amen. Thank you to uh, Brother Atkins and his, amen, officers for um, um, the escort on the ride. And everything was went well and went safe. Those of you who supported, and thanks to um, uh, Deacon Rosier and the AV Day Committee. Amen. <laughs> and uh, Deacon Rosier is not too late. Uh, and that goes into the next. And I want to thank those who accepted, amen, the pastor's challenge, 
Amen. I think we end up with a good number of folk that accepted the pastor's challenge. And those of you who don't know what the pastor's challenge um, is or was, um, I challenge each one of the members to give or donate $50 to um, the everyday uh, celebration. Amen. It's for a good cause. Amen. For scholarships for uh, less fortunate children. And I think Avery was pleased. Amen. Amen. I think Avery was pleased. Amen. So um, on behalf of the Coleman family and Avery, um, they, I'm sure they would thank you very much for allowing us to celebrate him and less fortunate children, or children with disabilities. Amen? Amen. So to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be all the glory. Amen. As we go into God's word, Hebrews chapter 12, and I think um, it'll tie in with all of the amen, testimonies that went forth today. Hebrews chapter 12, we'll read the first three verses. Hebrews chapter 12. I'll be reading the ESV version of the Bible, Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Amen. amen. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such, by, by, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may, so that you may not grow weary or faint it faint-hearted. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you, Father, for being able to stand behind this sacred desk. Father, I would now that you grant me mental and physical strength. Father, uh, anoint me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I may preach a gospel season with your Holy Ghost. Hide me behind the cross and let the blood of Jesus prevail. Lord, you said if I go, you go with me. Open my mouth and you speak for me. You find me now out here on your word. Consecrate me now for thy service divine. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength, and you are my redeemer. Satan, take your hands off of God's property. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Out of that passage, I want to speak from the subject, faith to run this race. Faith to run this race. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, the author exalted his readers, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Then he denotes in chapter 11 to many examples of Old Testament saints who endured the faith. Although they didn't receive the promise, Christ, uh, which we have received, our text, he returns to the theme of endurance saying, we have both this great cloud of witnesses from the Old Testament and Jesus himself, who is the supreme example of uh, one who endured horrible suffering for faith. Y'all going to pray for me? Y'all going to pray with me? He endured the cross and now is at the right hand of the Father. So that brings me to my first point. My first point is the Christian life is a difficult marathon that we must run. The Christian life is a long life, long, a lifelong grueling race that entails some long hills to climb and some uh, swampy uh, marshes that we must go through. To make it to the end, you need self-discipline and to get into good shape. You, you, you need to maintain your motivation and, and you would need, uh, self, uh, need, need to be self-sustained. No one is a marathon with the thought of dropping out after a mile. Finishing well is everything. In this race, you're not competing with other believers. We're all on the same team. Am I right about it? We're competing against the enemy of our souls who opposes God's kingdom and wants us to drop out. 
That's my first point. My second point is to run the Christian marathon, we must get into shape and stay in shape. Come on, somebody. The primary thing, as I said, is self-discipline motivated by the goal of finishing well. But it's, it, it specifically, specifically involves a couple of things. First of all, we must lay aside every encumbrance. The word means weight. It referred to physical weight, obesity, if you will, or to unnecessary baggage. The ancient Greek runners would actually run naked so as not to be encumbered. Olympic athletes today, or in our day, they wear like pretty skimpy clothes. Come on, somebody. They don't want anything to slow them down or drain their energy. Y'all seeing this thing? Picture the start of the Boston Marathon. This lean, muscular, Kenyan runner, they're at the front of the pack, waiting on the starting gun. Then there's a skippy, skinny little American runner. He's there too. But next to them is a kind of oversized guy, if you will, wearing all-weather pants, hiking boots, with a 50-pound backpack on his back. Someone next to me asks, what's the pack for? He says, I've got all the sodas and the Twinkies I need to finish this race. <laughs> you, you, you think it right. That guy, that guy, he wouldn't stand a chance of finishing, right? Let alone winning. Because he has not laid aside every encumbrance. Encumbrance are distinguished here from sins. They include uh, things that are not intricately wrong, but, not, but they're wrong because they're keeping you from running as you should. If you get rid of those heavy hiking boots, put on some jogging shoes <laughs> and the Twinkies, you'd run better, right? If you drop the backpack and, and dress in shorts and a tank top, you might finish the race at the risk of, of stepping on some toes. But to help you apply this, let, let me get more specific. Let's say this morning you don't have time to read your Bible and watch the news before you head out to work or head out to school. Which do you choose? You may say, but I need to keep abreast of what's happening in the world. Really? Where does the Bible say that? It says, it, it, it does say that you need to drink in the pure milk of the word so that by you may grow in respect to salvation. Now, if you want to know where that's found, that's found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Maybe you don't have time to read anything because you don't set your alarm early enough to just spend 10 minutes with the Lord. You need to shed the encumbrance of loving sleep or the news more than God. Can I preach this thing? Too much recreation can be another encumbrance in the race. We all need some free time to be renewed. But the question is, how much time do you need? Many Christians uh, feel, every, feel every evening watching TV or playing video games, but they don't have time to study the Bible or read some good books. They view the entire weekend as a time of recreation, even if it means missing church. I'm going to close it because y'all don't like this. To run the race, you've got to lay aside some incumbences. Some Christians ask the wrong question here. They ask, what's wrong with this movie or listening to this music or participating in this activity? The right question is, does this help me grow in godliness? If not, cast it off as dead weight. Well, see, we must lay aside every sin that so easily entangles us. In biblical times, 
people wear long robes. And you can't run with the long robe entangling your feet. You'd either pull it up, tuck it on your belt, or cast it totally aside. In the case of sin, you must totally get rid of it if you want to run the Christian race. Can I preach it? This doesn't refer only to certain besetting sins, but to all sins. Sin always begins in the mind. And so we must judge all sin at the thought level. Pride, lust, envy, greed, anger, gambling, selfishness. All of these things originate in the thought life. If you cut it off here, it goes no further. Come on, somebody. If you entertain these things, they will incubate and, 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 and develop into sinful words and actions. But the author's point is, you can't run the Christian race if you keep tripping over your sins. Come on, somebody. Then thirdly, thirdly, to run the Christian marathon, we must run with endurance the course set before us. Note a couple of things here. First thing is, God sets the course. If you're running a marathon, you can't make up your own course. If you stray from the course, you're disqualified. Come on, somebody. The race is set before us. Just as Jesus had the joy set before him, God is the solid one who sets the course for each of us just as he set the course of the cross for Jesus. Y'all seeing this thing? To finish the Christian marathon, it's important to keep in mind all times that the solid one sets the course. Now, you may not like parts of the course. You may be prone to grumble. Why did the course have to go over hills or or through swamps? The answer is because the sovereign God planned it that way. You won't be able to run by faith unless you submit your will to his will. Then you must run with endurance. Running with endurance requires adopting a certain mindset. If you have in mind that you're running a 400 meter race, you're not going to do it well when the pack goes over 400 meters. Y'all just see that? When you learn that the race has barely begun, you're going to quit with a bad attitude. Lord, help me to preach. This is what Jesus meant when he talked about counting the cost of following him. Before you make a, a, a glee co co commitment to be a Christian, think it through. Are you willing to put out the effort? Are you willing to put in the sweat and tears? Are you willing to, to go through the endurance and the pain for going the distance? If not, don't start the race because you're going to look pretty silly when you drop out after the 400 meters. But lastly, we run this, we run with endurance by fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes is literally looking off to. The idea is taking your eyes off other things and focusing on Jesus alone. The Bible, it tells us to examine ourselves to see if we are in faith. We must examine ourselves before partaking the Lord's Supper. But we should not live with our focus constantly on ourselves, but rather on the Lord. It, 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 it's your daily quiet time. It, it, it's good to, to pause and examine your heart. It, 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 is there any sin that I need to confess? Is there a bad attitude or lack of faithfulness? But then turn your eyes toward Jesus in all that you are in him. Fixing your eyes on Jesus requires trusting all that he is. Come on, somebody. All that he is for us. Paul often refers to our being in Christ 
Baptism refers to the fact that we're totally identified with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. When Satan tempts us with gifts of a past sin, we take refuge in God and Christ's shed blood. All of God's promises are yes in Christ. We're even seated with Christ in heavenly places, according to Ephesians 1 and 20. Focus on these truths by faith. Fixing our eyes on Jesus is the key to not growing weary and lose heart. You see how it's tying in with our testimonies? Just as a runner who is not in excellent condition gradually slows down and finally collapses, so the believer who does not keep looking with faith to Jesus will eventually collapse. We call it burnout. Right, coach? It seems that there are many who are weary in their souls in the Christian marathon. The remedy is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Well, I got to close and get y'all out of here. Church, the remedy to run this race is to fix your eyes on Jesus. The Bible said looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith. The Bible says in Philippians 3 and 14, I press toward the mark for the prize, for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We got to run on and see what the end's going to be. I realize every once in a while, you don't feel like it and you want to give up. There's obstacles in your way. The last 18 months, has been a tough time, but we got to run on in faith and see what the end's going to be. I heard, I heard the songwriter say, I come too far to give up now. I come too far to turn around now. Is there anybody in here? You realize you come too far to give up now. You going to run when you don't feel like it because you realize that your running will not be in vain. Run on and see what the end gonna be. I can't stop now. I come too far, too far, too far to turn around now. What's been has been. I'm looking, anybody looking, to Jesus, who is, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. I got to close, but my soul is on fire. The text says that you have to lay aside every weight that so easily besets you. Can, can I show you something? And then I'm going to close. You see, weight can be a help or it can be a hindrance. Can I preach this thing? Now, the weight it's talking about is things that hold you back from running. Weariness will hold you back. Despair will hold you back. Sickness will hold you back. But see, you can use weight to your advantage. Can I prove it to you? You can take weight and turn it into faith. Let me prove it to you. This young man, he just bought a weight machine. How I know? Because I helped him put it in his house. Now, on that weight machine, there's all types of things that you can do on that weight machine. Am I right about it? All types of different exercise that you can do you can lift weight. And one thing you can do, you can bench press. Now, on the bench press, you have to lift weight. Right? But by you lifting that weight, that weight that you're lifting, you're not laying aside. The weight you're lifting, you're lifting it to make you stronger. Some of y'all just missed that. Weight can be a help or it can be a hindrance. 
thought. Help me. Use the weight to increase your faith. That despair lift it to make you stronger. That stumbling block that's in your way lift it to make you stronger. That wayward child that's keep going bad pray for that child that he will have faith to become stronger. Lift the weight. Lift the weight. Now there is some weight that you need to lay aside that keeps you from running. Yeah, yeah, still miss. Let me see if I can bring it closer. In order to run, you have to lay aside stuff. See, I can run with this jacket on, but if I take it off, I can run with it on. Now, there's two things I can do with it, depending on the situation. If I run with it on, I'm going to use it to make me stronger. But if I take it off, I'm going to get rid of it so I can run quicker. So it's up to you to decide what you need to take off, what you need to keep on, what you need to bench press, and what you need to lay aside. Because you need to decide what you need to leave off and what you need to keep on. Because the point is you got to run, run. Is there anybody in here? You've been running for Jesus a long time and you not tired yet isn't that what the songwriter say I've been running for Jesus a long time and I'm not tired yet because my focus is not what I have on my focus is not on my circumstance my focus is not on my situation but my focus the Bible says, look to the hills with cometh your help. My help, my help, my help, my, 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 my. You have to know where your help comes from. You have to know where your help comes from. Run on. See what there's going to be. Run with faith. Faith increases your endurance. Come on, somebody. The Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. See, I know what's behind me. I'm trying to close, but I dropped my shoulders on fight. I know what's behind me, but if my faith is in Jesus, I can run I can run. I may not see what's in the future, but I heard he knows my past. He knows my future. So I'm going to run with faith. Run with faith. But, but look at this thing. I got, I got to go. I got to go. Look at this thing. It says, consider him who endured, it says, from sinners, such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. <laughs> Y'all missed that, didn't you? He endured. He took the criticism. He took the pain. He went through. He ran before you. I'm trying to get y'all to picture something. You see, I'm not going to run this race by myself. I'm not going to run this race alone. Because Jesus is in front of me and he's going through everything before I get to it. See, that's why you can't stop running. Because if you stop running and Jesus goes ahead of, ahead of you, 
Where's your protection? It say he took the shame. He took the hostility from sinners. In other words, they going to talk about you if you're doing good. They going to talk about you if you're doing bad. But the text said, Jesus, Jesus endured the hostility. But see, but see, but see, but see, so me, here's where you come in at. He did all that. And see, this should give you energy. This should motivate you. The text says, so that you may not, may not grow weary or faint at heart. Or, come on, somebody. You see, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to close this thing. When we are living this life, when we're going through life and situations seem to knock us down, some of us want to stay down and allow it to knock us down. But the text said he went through so you don't have to grow weary and not faint hearted. You can run with assurance. You can run because the Bible says run and not get weary. Walk and not faint. Mm, I'm trying to get y'all to see something. In other words, it's the mindset. You see, I, I told Coach, I, I never was a jogger. I had to have a purpose. I had to have a football in my arm or chasing a baseball or a basketball. I had to have a purpose. I couldn't just get in and jog. I had to have a, for me, it had to be a purpose. So now ask yourself, what is your purpose on this Christian journey? Why are you running? Are you running just to be running because the enemy is behind you? What is your purpose in running? I'm through. I'll close with that. You got to know your purpose. <laughs> you ever seen, and I know you have because I've done it myself. In a crowd where somebody takes off running, don't know why they're running, but you take off too. You don't know why you're running, you just running. Oh, so y'all done it too, huh? And come to find out, you're running for no reason. Now here you are tired, give out and out of breath, and you ran for no reason. That's running without a purpose. On this Christian journey, what is your purpose for running? Every day you get up, Lord, what's my purpose today? What is my purpose today? How am I going to take something I encountered today and turn it into faith? How am I going to take what happens to you today that I may minister to somebody else and get somebody else to run this race? How am I going to encourage somebody else to not give up on this race? Because giving up is not an option. Because Christ died for you. And early Sunday morning, he got up for you. Run with the purpose that faith Continue to motivate you. Lay aside every weight that holds you back. But at the same time, use that weight to make you strong. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And as you stand to your feet. There may be someone here that don't know the Lord apart from their sins. You've been weighed down and you've been weighed down and you don't, can't see, you can't see your way through and you just don't know which way to go because you're thinking worldly and thinking worldly has continued to, to bury you in so much weight and continue to bury you in so much stuff to seem like every day, every day, it's praising, praising. Every day there's something else. Every day is something that's weighing you down. And every day there's another situation. But in your mind, you're trying to figure out how you are going to get out of it. 
But you're in a situation where you have not accepted Christ as your Savior. And you can't see because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, if you're not spiritual, spiritual things seem foolish unto you. So by you accepting Christ as your Savior, by you being adopted into the family and receiving him as your Savior, he'll help you with all that weight. The Bible says his yoke is easy. His yoke is light. Take on his yoke. He's even asking you to give you his, give you yours. Give him that weight. Give him all that that's bearing you down. You let him focus on that and you focus on him. And you can do that by accepting him as your savior today. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died, and on the third day God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. If you find yourself in a situation, won't you come? Don't worry about the people around you. You're going to talk about whether you do good or talk about whether you do bad. Today's your day. It can be a new day for you. You can shed some stuff just by accepting them and just saying, Amen. You say, well, I'm saved. But I'm like that prodigal son. And I want to come back to you. He's standing with open arms waiting for you to come back. If you strayed away, waiting for you to come back. Satisfied with where you are there. It's prayer time. Those you desire prayer, a lot of you can't come to the altar as we traditionally do, but you can make an altar right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you stand. You can tell the Lord what you need and what you're in need of. You can tell him what your heart desires. I'll give you a few minutes to lay it at the altar. And then we'll pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for yet another day. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Father, we thank you for being a God that sits high, but you continue to look low. Father, we thank you for your word that we can continue to run this race in faith. Father, you've endured that we may endure. Father, you've conquered that we may be conquerors as well. Father, even in the midst of all, there's still situations and circumstances that your people have laid at the altar. Father, you know all about it. You know all about the situation. You know what they're praying for. You know what they've been praying for. You know what they're asking for, Father. Now, kind sir, in all of your godliness, look at the situations. Examine the circumstances. And Father, any way you bless us, we'll be satisfied. Father, have thine own way in every situation, every circumstance. Father, maybe some that sick and desire a healing. Father, maybe some that desire a financial breakthrough. Father, maybe some just need a, a spiritual uh, deliverance. Father, whatever it is, you already know because you're God. And we're going to bless you. We're going to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> right where you are, let us look to the Lord for the benediction. Father, we come and done as thou hast commanded, but yet we find there's still room. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, Rest, rule, and abide with these thy people now, henceforth, even unto evermore, as we lift our voice together and say amen, amen, amen. 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 Look at someone and tell them, God loves you, so do I. Amen.